In this video, I want to cover a new feature that we've released in DronePan called Automatic Exposure Bracketing. It's a simple option that you have now in your DronePan settings. And what AEB will do is for each camera position in the air, it will take three photos. So in this case, I had a manual exposure set. And for each photo position, it took one exposure level above and below. So three photos at each position. And what that ultimately allows you to do is take those photos and combine them for better contrast to create an HDR panorama. So in this video, I want to talk through my current workflow of doing that. Now, I'm by no means an expert, but I want to share some of the results that I've been getting lately. I'll quickly demonstrate how to enable this when you're connected to drone pan in your aircraft. You'll just go into settings, select AEB, and save. And here is my series of photos from the stadium panorama that I just demonstrated. This first photo is my manual exposure. And then if we look at the next one, you can see that there's one exposure value down. So it's a little bit darker and then one above. So it's a little bit lighter. So for each, we're going to have three photos. What I'll do now is I will load those series of photos into AutoPano Pro. Now I know there are a lot of guys that use PT GUI and this is apparently possible to do HDR panoramas, but in this case I'm using AutoPano and that's what I want to demonstrate. Drone pan with my normal settings will take 26 photos, but since I had AEB turned on, it took 78. And the cool thing about AutoPano is you can see that it automatically detects these photos that they're similar. They're called stacks and it has a little number three that shows us three photos per location. Now what I'll do before doing the detection process, I'll go into my general settings, panorama, and what we want to do is do color correction based on exposure. So I'll select OK and then detect. We'll let that process finish. You can see here that we have a good pre-stitch and what I'll do next is we'll go into edit before we create our final panorama. Now a couple things that I like to do, I covered this in a previous video, but I am a big fan of getting the full 360 by 180 with the fake sky. I'll put a link into the description below that shows how to do that fake sky. So I'll go ahead and select full sphere. We'll accept that setting. Then what I want to do next is go over to our auto settings and change that to HDR. You can see that we have exposure set here. You will see that the panorama is a little bit darker. Then finally, I want to go over here to the render settings and we're going to select HDR output. We want JPEG and that's really all we need to do. Next, I'll click render. Now, this process does take longer than a normal panorama because we're ultimately stitching and combining three layers. Our panorama export is complete. The total time took about 12 minutes. And let's go ahead and take a look at this in preview. You can see the output. You notice that it is a little bit dark. I'll zoom in just so we can get a little bit more detail. What I'll do next is bring it into GIMP. So our image is here in GIMP. You can see, once again, it is a little dark in areas, but through research and just looking around online, I read a about a process called tone mapping. And the awesome thing is, there is a GIMP tone mapping plugin that we can install. So I've gone ahead and done that. If you want to learn how to do that, you can go to this link. I'll post it in the description below. And what that means is, with that script, we can then run this tone mapping process. And you can specify blur, opacity. And I played around with a few different settings. And here we can see the default. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And what you'll see is when I turn on the layer here, you'll be able to see uh, the tone mapping take effect. So this has already been done previously. You can see there's a bit more lighting. And if you read up on tone mapping, you'll read a little bit about the process and how tone mapping sort of works in localized areas to give you contrast uh, based on certain regions of your photo. And overall, the process of tone mapping definitely improved the brightness of the photo and just ultimately gave me some good contrast with this panorama. I played around with a few different settings for tone mapping. 
The defaults generally work pretty well, but you can definitely give that a try on your end. So this is what we look like. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn on our fake sky. And with the fake sky enabled, you can see the full panorama here in Panotour, our little preview. And ultimately from Panotour, what you just saw, I was able to export this panorama. I just wanted to share that process with you guys because I'm really excited about this whole AEB HDR panorama. Please check out DronePan. It's free in the iOS app store. Right now we only support DJI, but in the future we plan on supporting more. And if you're a member of Facebook, check out our community because I just have to share this one from Jonathan LaLiberty. It's pretty amazing. He was able to fly at Burning Man this year and took a 360 pano. And I can't even explain how <laughs> amazing and awesome it is just to see the scale of Burning Man from a aerial perspective. Once again, I'm by no means an expert. That's my current workflow. If I appreciate you guys following along. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.